Hi, I'm Chazan Stephen Storr, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football! Forget about Monday Night Football! There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug! Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, how many talk about that? Shalom, welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. It is my great pleasure to have on the show with me today Chazan Stephen Stower. And uh, it is just a pleasure to have you on the show. He's been on our show a number of times before. He's been on the show uh, with Cantor Rosenblum, with Cantor Goller, and uh, also as the MC of the Perfect Pitch Collegiate Jewish Acapella. Um, show that we did uh, a couple of episodes, and that was so much fun with all those colleges. Well, let's let's get on with that. I was talking to one of the kids backstage, and, and she said, "You know, I want to grow up and be a chazan." I said, "Well, you're going to have to make a choice. It's one or the other." <laughs> now, not only are you so funny and such a great MC, but you had a lot of fun with that, didn't you? Absolutely. It, it was um, it was inspiring. It, it was inspiring for everyone. It was inspiring. Plus, it's inspiring to see all those Jewish college students so connected to their Judaism and, and making music as part of that connection to their Judaism. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, beautiful yeah, absolutely. Thing. When we have doubts about the youth and their identities and affiliation and non-affiliation to uh, Jewish communities and organizations and synagogues, to see this band of young people so inspired by their Yiddishkeit through music, is for me as a cousin, yeah. really music to my ears. And from so many schools all over the country, which was, was one of the great things that bringing them all to Chicago. Yeah. So uh, Hazard Storer is a uh, graduate of the University of Pittsburgh and of JTS, the Jewish Theological Seminary. He's been for 30 years at Congregation Beth Shalom in Northbrook and longer than the current rabbi, much longer. Part of the Cantor's Assembly, he was the president and uh, been honored so many times throughout his years. He is involved in so many different leadership groups and involved with uh, local, uh, with Bright Star and working with uh, interfaith communities as well. And he's edited many booklets about uh, mourning rites and Jewish traditions. He also is the son of a Holocaust survivor, and he's involved in uh, community choir Sela, which integrated adults and special needs with the general community. Just yeah. does so much in his work in the community besides uh, being a, a cantor. And his latest uh, work, which I want to share with you, is his first novel. It is called My Brother's Keeper by Cantor Stephen Farrell Stower. And uh, this book is uh, your, the first time you've written a novel, um, and, and it certainly has a Jewish theme to it. And uh, what made you want to even go out and say, I'm gonna be an author, and besides writing Jewish things that you have over the years? What, what brought you into this realm of, 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 of writing a story uh, based on uh, you know, Jewish life situations? Well, I think it's, it's got a, a number of different pathways that brought me here. As a young person, I was just inspired by writing. I wrote poetry since I've been eight or nine or 10 years old. Just felt something creative inside of me, and until I figured out maybe it was Chazonas, I was a writer. Secondly, and I think you'll appreciate this, it's my middle name. Um, my mother named me Stephen Farrell, uh, a unique middle name, and when I questioned her as to why the name Farrell, she said she had an uncle Frank who was very dear to her family and wanted to honor him with that letter F. So I said, well, Frank's not a bad name, why Farrell? And she said, you know, I, I thought it would be unique so that someday you might grow up to be an author or something uh, of, of unique expression. So I know you said that your father's middle name. My father's middle name is Farrell. I never met anybody with the middle name Farrell before. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the only two Farrells I know were students. I thought they were girls with the first name Farrell. Uh -huh. I've never met anyone else with the middle name, especially a male, with the name Farrell. And my father also is. Right. I think there was a guy on MASH, Mike Farrell. Mike Farrell, right. And there's right. Pharrell uh -huh. now. The Pharrell the singer, singer, the singer. But none like your father and I. Uh -huh. No middle names. And so my mother, uh, thank God, is still with us. She's 93 years old, lives here in Chicago. 
and it was one of my bucket list things that I should please God write a book to fulfill her prophecy of the fact that I'd be a creative individual. My grandmother's still with us. She's 103, and I asked her. She said it was your grandfather. <laughs> I asked her how to. How do I take the picture? She said it was your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> and so in 1984, um, I lived in Israel, where I was blessed to meet my wife, and it was during my I know your wife Susan was... very well for many years. She worked with me, teaching with me for a period of time, and uh, a wonderful you. woman, very nice. Still loves teaching and, and engaged in it on a daily basis. But it was during Operation Moses uh -huh. in Israel, and we met this beautiful community. For let me tell people who don't know, Operation Moses was uh, a... a group of uh, airplanes sent from Israel to Ethiopia to rescue Ethiopian Jews from Ethiopia and bring them back to Israel. It was a government operation. And were you there uh, as an observer, as, as a volunteer? Were you involved in it in any way? Or did you just um, know about it at, at the time you were there? At the moment, my wife and I both were studying at, at the seminary's branch in Israel. And then we were invited to come to some of the absorption centers to, to help ingratiate uh -huh. uh, these people to How Israel awesome. and How other awesome. Jews. Very so nice. um, I had a, a wonderful relationship with some of those individuals. Uh, it broke down some barriers I may have had between understanding the different cultures and the different races. And, and I became infatuated with their community. A dear friend of mine, um, runs an organization called My Brother's Keeper International that right. takes place in Israel, helping Ethiopian Olim and Russian Olim, people that are usually um, without means to have hot lunches for their children or to buy winter coats or to do all those wonderful things. And I promised him that should I ever, please God, make profit from this book, it would all go towards his organization. Very nice. Which is caring for other people. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, the characters in your story, uh, especially uh, Uzi and Kovi, as they are, one being uh, a, a young man living with his parents, the other one being an adopted Ethiopian young man, uh, were these boys based on boys that you actually knew or based on your story that you brought them to life? Yeah. Uh, the Uzi part is really a little autobiographical. A, that's my Hebrew name, Uziel. But um, yeah, a lot of it takes place back in Pittsburgh, where I grew up. I do have a father, did rest his soul, have a father who was a Holocaust survivor. This gentleman's a Holocaust survivor. The, the mound of pastries this young man eats, I ate them. Uh, so some of it is autobiographical. The adoption aspect of this young Kovi person is, is fiction. Uh -huh. Very nice, very nice. So, so tell me something. When someone comes along and says, I have this idea and I want to write a book and, and I'm going to put my story in print and maybe this story has been with you for, for 30 years before you ever put it in print and you know you didn't develop it until you actually wrote it uh, in, in, you know, for a book, but did you, did you say, oh, I could never get this published or you know, what am I going to do or, or, or I'm going to save enough money myself so I can publish this book myself. How did, how did the whole process come along that this book actually exists, and uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's self-published, but but it, it, it's out on the market. It, it has a, uh, a UPC symbol. Right. Uh, how, how did you come to all that work? It's a lot of work to do by yourself. It's a lot of work, and it's probably a, a project that was 20 years in the making. Mm -hmm. I had a sabbatical for my congregation for a month or two about 20 years ago, and I wanted to make valuable use of the time. So I had this story in my mind. I wanted to concretize it into a, into a manuscript, and I started to write. Put it away for five or six years, took it back out, put it away, took it back out. And then I had a number of friends read it that were much more prolific readers than I. And they gave me some red marks all over, just like my report card back in the day. I had a lot of red marks saying, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And I went back. And then after a while, have you ever been to a perfume counter, a cologne counter, sure. and you smell one or two colognes, and after three or four of them, you just can't smell anymore? Right. You're just, that's the way the book became to me. I, I couldn't go back and keep writing it. I was, I was almost done with it. Uh, and yet people said it needed more, it needed more, it needed more. And that's why about six years ago, uh, I, I made a call to the 
Rochelle Zell High School, which was the Chicago Land Jewish Church. High School, where all three of my kids graduated. Uh -huh. And I spoke to a doctor, Roberta Miller, and I said, do you have a student that is uniquely talented in English? Uh, she gave me the name of this young man, Benji Fleischacker, who's credited in the book. I called him up and I uh, began to collaborate with him and ask him for his perspective on the story, because I was kind of dumb. Well, your story, your story is, has its basis. You have your stories about young people, mainly the main characters are young people in the story. What better way to find a young person to, to, to collaborate with? I think it's a wonderful idea. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of it myself, but I hear where you're coming from. Right, so from his perspective as a younger person, that was healthy. From his perspective as a bright gentleman, it was healthy. And he plays cello and he, he's been overseas. He's, he's kind of a worldly young man. And he kind of helped me reshape the book in a, in a very um, vital way. And after that, I sent it to an author, a, uh, editor. They edited it. I called Dog Ear Publishing. We went through, again, another year or two of process. And yeah, you have to be willing to put a few dollars in and a lot of sweat. And you can fulfill a, a, a little dream. A little it's wonderful. Book. I'll come back to the book in a minute. But I, I want to talk to you about you. Because first of all, your voice is superb. You and I have co-officiated at weddings together. And when I'm listening to you sing, uh, brachot at the weddings, you know, I'm just, it's heavenly to me. I love, I love a sweet chazan voice and, and, and I'm so glad we're friends. I, I wonder, you know, your friend, uh, Cantor Henry Rosenblum is, uh, the former chancellor, I believe he's retired now, right? Former dean. Former dean of the Cantorial Association of the School at the Jewish Theological Seminary. Uh, you and he are contemporaries and uh, we're at the pulpit here in the Chicago area for a long time together. Tell me, what is it that, that makes a chazan um, uh, stay in a position? You're not the rabbi. You're not the rabbi. You're the chazan. How do you stay in a position for so long and find peace in your, in your, in your career when, when, you're, when you're so talented and not look beyond you know, that as far as chazanas, you know, you're not teaching in a university, uh, and, and you certainly could be, and uh, you're, you certainly have all your friends in your congregation, there's the beauty of that, I know that, you know, as, as a rabbi, but but I, I always wonder, what, what is it that keeps you in that position for so many years, and uh, wanting to continue from rabbi to rabbi, as, as, yeah. as, as rabbis retire and, and come along, and, uh, what, what keeps you there? Um. It's difficult. I think as a chazan, you are a creative, uh, a spiritual architect, if you will. And you're always looking to build and, and to change and create. Uh, and so it's difficult sometimes to stay in one place for 20 or 30 years, yeah. as I've been blessed to do. But in, in my specific uh, congregation, I've been blessed. I've been blessed with a congregation that said, we know your nature, for good and for bad. We've, we know your creative nature. And we want you to fulfill that. So if you want to lead a Hever Kedisha, do that. If you want to work with the special needs community, you can do that. The LGBT community, go ahead and do that. Maintain your primary focus on the congregation and life cycles of the mitzvah and Shabbos and teaching and all those wonderful things. But they gave me the latitude to go ahead out and start the Sela Quad uh -huh. and to work with Federation of Men's Clubs. And they, they've blessed me. I haven't blessed them as much as they've blessed me by allowing me, again, the latitude to, to become what God has gifted me. That's, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful yeah. thing. Tell me, as, as a chazan, uh, do you listen to, um, still listen to, I should say, do you yeah. still listen to uh, classic chazanish recordings and stuff to learn new tunes that you didn't know before or just to enjoy them as, as a chazan? Do you still do that today? I, I have an old 78 record player in my office and sometimes I'll crank it up and put on the old 78s and I do. I listen to it for nostalgic purposes, for the beauty of it, to remember back in the day when my father um, bought me my first cantorial record and I listened to it you know, and, and warming up, and it, it brings you back to yesteryear. The practicality of that music in my community, in our congregation, is not as ap applicable. So I do tend to listen to a lot of Jewish music, but it's not the chazonis uh -huh. of, of yesteryear. It's not uh -huh. Rosa Black and Pinchik and Blanche and uh -huh. 
Moshe Ganshoff and Moshe Talbe and all those stunning. I grew up with a gentleman, Moshe Talbe, in Pittsburgh, who was a Schindler Juden. And uh, he's the one who, who kind of inspired me to go into the cantor. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I love that. You can't escape it. It's, it's your mother's milk, if you will. But for practical purposes of nigunim and things like that, that my congregation with a modern ear that's used to listening to XM radio or an iPod or something, you have to listen to different stations. Uh-huh, I understand completely. I do yeah. understand completely. Tell me, uh, what was your introduction to singing? Uh, did, you, did you do a wedding band when you were a teenager or in your early 20s before you went into cantorial school or anything? Did, what, what, what led you? Was it singing Zmirot at the Shabbat table with your family? Uh, how, how did that come about? My father was a beautiful Baltfila, and, and no disrespect to other Balkora out there in the world, but had to be one of the, the best ever. Uh, he knew things by heart and just mellifluously flowed from his tongue. And so Shabbos, we would sing Shabbos Miras. Every Shabbos, we were in shul. Every Friday night, if we didn't go to shul, we walked around. I followed him in his footsteps, literally, around the living room as he dubbed out loud, and I would try to mimic him. And on Shabbos morning, you know, you know, is where I got my start. And it was always shul, 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 until my senior year of high school when I was given the opportunity to play Muttal and Fiddler on the Roof. And so, wonder of wonders, uh, that led me to the University of Pittsburgh Men's Glee Club. I learned, studied there, different genre of music. And then it was Cousin Tao Bay who said, when I was just out in the regular job market and not doing so well, said, you know what, you, you have a skill, why don't you look at the full-time cantrip as an as a opportunity. Did you also, since your bar mitzvah were, were a little bit older, did you, did you take the Ahmed and Daven for the Ahmed also? Oh, yeah. yeah. You were, you were about to be low, always. Lots of, Very um, nice. Yeah. Very nice. And I grew up, I grew up in the, like a Glitzianer, you know, Ashkenaz community. So to come now and to have to dive in for a more Spartan speaking congregation. With a tough. With a tough, which is tough. Yes, it is. Um, to so Balachash, I still dive in sometimes Ashkenaz. Uh -huh. But when I dive in for the congregation. You use the tough and the, and the patah. Right. And, and the kamats. All that. Uh, as, as, as such. <laughs> Well, it, it, it's an interesting thing also. When I, uh, before I went to day school, I started in Hebrew school, and I learned to read with a taf, but I started going to shul, and everybody davened with a saf, and now it's very hard to switch back. Mm -hmm. Although when I first started to learn to lane, to read Torah, I did it with a taf, it just naturally switched over because of the way I davened. So I also have the same, the same experience. What do you think is the, uh, um, there's a secret in the book. There's a secret that, that you have to read the book to find out this whole relationship with Uzi and Kovi and the separation of the two boys and the, uh, the father who was the Holocaust survivor and everything. What, what do you think is the real pull that makes this book special for someone to pick up and read? Hmm. Good question. Uh, I, well, A, A, part of it I think is anybody's story. Right? It's, the, it's the love of a, of a son for his father, or it could be a daughter for a mother, or a son for, you know, for a child for a parent. And, and the pull is this son's passionate love and desire to have his father's acceptance and love. Then you have this secondary person, Kovi, who comes into the family. Adopted. Adopted. And there's this tension. The father is a Holocaust survivor. These young boys in Ethiopian war Survivor. Survivor. And so they have a simpatico that the other son doesn't have with the father. So there's a, a tension that grows there. And, and part of the book is that fight of the two boys for the acceptance and the love of the father. And they get up on the pulpit and they dove in with him, but who gets to sing with him? And who, it's, it's a natural tension, I think, of sibling rivalry. And that's why, if I may, mm -hmm. the book says, my brother's keeper, but you'll see the R is small case. Yes which translates then possibly to read it as my bother's keeper. And thus the sibling, the adopted brother, becomes a nuisance, a bother to the other son. And it's how do you, um, how do you manage and how do you resolve sibling rivalry and issue and love and, and family relations. We all have family relations, good and bad and difficult and blessed. Uh, and I think that's the, the something that everyone can personalize by reading the book. And yet there is this twist to it with the Holocaust and with Ethiopia and, um, and then that secret.
that comes out at the end. Right, right. This is great. Well, um, we're here. I'm here with uh, Cantor Stephen Farrow Stower. He is the Hazan at uh, Beth Shalom of Northbrook. And uh, we're here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Once they've outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit BoosterSeat.gov. Hi, I'm Chazan Alberto Mizrahi, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. Welcome back. We're here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. I'm here with uh, Stephen Farrell Stower. Uh, he is the author of the book, My Brother's Keeper. He is the cantor, the Chazan, at uh, Congregation Beth Shalom of Northbrook. And um, uh, you've outlasted, as I mentioned earlier, um, the rabbi who retired uh, for some years, Carl Wilkin is, is, is a dear friend, and I've known him since I was a young boy, because uh, he came in there when I was a young boy. Um, and uh, I know you and he are very close friends. Uh, you have now a new rabbi, a new assistant rabbi. Um, is your job as a cantor, because people are always in awe of cantors, because they have that beautiful talent and yet they're not the, as I mentioned earlier, they're not the rabbi right. of the synagogue. Do, does it change with the rabbi? Does the rabbi change your approach as, as the spiritual um, singer and the, and the leader of, of the, um, what's the, the nigunim and the, and the ruach of the congregation? Yeah, I think like with the Joseph story of Ayapa Melech Hadash, right? A new king comes in and you have to find out what, what was their background. Did they come from a reform, a more reform background, a more traditional background? Because that's going to dictate their approach to the pulpit. And as the Mara de Atra of the Shul, uh -huh. they dictate primarily what happens on the pulpit. Both rabbis, all three rabbis, all four rabbis I've worked right. with as assistant rabbis or now head rabbis, uh, have all given me the latitude and the kindness to, to choose the nigunim and the nuschaot and, and to, whether I'm using the choir, I'm not using the choir, but it certainly, um, it certainly directs my, my approach and my concern. I wanna please the rabbi, I wanna please Amcha, primarily as Abraham Joshua Heschel said, you know, if, if don't, I forget the exact quote, but don't face the curiosity of man, realize you have an audience of one. So most of my tefillah, of course, I'm focusing on God, and trying to please God in my tefillah. Um, and being a chazan is, is rewarding. I, I joke sometimes that nobody ever goes home humming the sermon, uh -huh. right? right? So it's, it's, I know that we can, att uh, we can uh, affect people, touch people, influence people's neshama by the music that we sing. And as I said, thank God, uh, the rabbis I've worked with have understood that and they allow me that liberty. You know, your colleagues in Chicago who are a long time famous chazani, and stuff. I've had many of them on my television show, and I've had people such as uh, Cantor Hirschstick on my television mm -hmm. show before a number of times, who is, uh, you know, one of the most famous Chazanim in the world as well. This is Naftali Hirschstick, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Dan. And you see these collaborations uh, on video of them going to Europe and singing together with all these other famous Chazanim from around the world. And you know, when I say, oh, I've had him, I've had him, I've had him on my TV show, it, it, it means a lot to me when I see those things. Have you, have you had some collaborations that have really meant a lot to you in, in singing? Um, one of the more unique and famous people, Dudu Fisher, uh, you know, Dudu I've Fisher, had the, sure. the joy of singing with. Um, and, and then mostly just my local colleagues who uh -huh. you come to love. To me, it's more, it's less about the, the um, celebrity of it and more the, the relationship the camaraderie. of it. I'd rather be inter uh, interviewed by you than by Wolf Blitz. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a cashier and there's a, a care about each other. I understand. So my collaborations have been um, with mostly my conservative colleagues. I've done a lot with the reform colleagues in the neighborhood uh -huh. and they are very dear to me. But I, I did do something recently. I have a collaboration of me and three other cantors, one from Detroit, one from LA, one from New York. And we have a program, a show called The Clergy Boys. And it's a takeoff of The Jersey Boys. I, I was hoping you would bring this up because yeah. I wanted to, I didn't want to say it without you saying it. So thank no. you for bringing it up. So I've heard of The Clergy Boys. 
Was that something that was really, uh, did this in Florida? Was it Florida? We've done it in New York, Detroit, LA, Chicago, and in March we're going to Florida. Oh, you're going to Florida. So that's what I read about, you're going to Florida. Yeah. And, and that must be so much fun. It is a gas. Oh, it is oh, as fun as I've ever had. So when you're all in Chicago together, if you would let me know, I would love to have you guys on and just do a piece from it and talk to everyone. That would be so much fun. It'd be great. We hope to come back. All right. Well, this is just absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, I'm here with uh, Cantor Stephen Farrell Stower. He is the Chazan at uh, Congregation Beth Shalom in Northbrook. I was wondering if before we finish the show, if you would sing a little bit for me, because I do love your voice, as you know. Um, sure. Great. Sure. Great. So, I'll, I'll sing a little Nigu and my dad taught me. And then if we have time, maybe I'll do a, a little, this is Shabbos, mm -hmm. sure. not that I don't know the words, but you never want to take a chance. So the Nigu is uh, as such. You'll do something for most officers for us? So this, again, a sentence or two. I, it's not a Musa flank uh, tape in that we're doing. But this cousin Tabe wrote and taught me, as I said, of Pittsburgh. Uh, I believe he just turned 90 years old this year. God willing, he should live. Is it hidden in Swan Secure? Amen. Te canta Shabbos Ratsi That was beautiful. I can't thank you enough. Chazam, Stephen Stower, thank you so much for being on the show. I wish you much success with your novel, My Brother's Keeper. And uh, I hope to see you again, and I'd love to have the uh, clergy, boys. clergy boys on the show sometime in the future. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see our shows on the web. Um, also, if you want to send Hazan Stower an email or me or find out more about his book, send it to info at tvrabbi.com. I will forward to him, and I know that he'll get back to you personally. Hope to see you all next time right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone, and thank you again, Hazan Stower. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.